When two thugs try to escape with a little girl, something emerges from the forest to save her. Her life is in the hands of the very thing her grandparents warned her to stay away from at all costs. Erin Belcher lives in a small town in northwest Canada. It's empty and lonely there, especially in winter, with nothing to do. This is a quiet town, but it doesn't mean there is no crime. Someone close to Erin is about to confront the dark side of Anavik. She lives with her husband George and their six-year-old granddaughter Stacy, whose parents were killed in a car accident. Every time the hot summer days passed, the misery came over the guy, and he couldn't stand the life in the village. He grabbed a gun from the wall, put it in a backpack over his shoulder, and hurried to his grandfather's hut. When he arrived, it was almost dark at night, and he wanted to arrive before dark, so he quickened his pace and walked quickly along the main road. At this point, though the town can feel lonely, Stacy's presence is more than enough for Aaron and George. They raised her as their own child, but she still misses her parents. One thing she has to remind her of them is their house cat, Shelby. For months, Stacy had been fighting for a pet for her parents and picked Shelby from a local rescue. Shelby had always been reserved, but with the deaths of Stacy's parents, she sensed a change. Now she is very protective of Stacy, even patrolling the property like a watchdog. With Stacy, though, she was gentle and patient. Aaron and George have complete trust in Shelby, knowing that she will always have the little girl's best interests at heart. Until one winter day, Stacy and Shelby disappeared by the lake together. George is mowing the lawn in the backyard, which backs onto the lake. He kept his eyes on the two, but then he turned around for just a few minutes. When he turned around again, they were gone. George wasn't too worried. The two often played together by the lake before returning to the house. At the same time, however, danger lurks in their path. Stacy spotted it first. From behind a large oak tree, a gray figure appeared. It was bigger than Shelby, much hairier, and stood motionless, watching them. Stacy slowed down and climbed the tree tremblingly. Just behind her legs, Shelby followed. Just as Stacy was a few feet away from the animal, there was a sudden movement. It happened so quickly that it was impossible to tell which animal moved first, but in an instant, Shelby had chased that animal around the woods. The two figures were indistinct, but as they stopped to look at each other, Stacy began to understand what it was. It was a dog. The two animals circled her several times, and the little girl squealed with joy. It could sense that Shelby wasn't threatening as it lay on the lumpy grass, panting. Shelby petted it playfully, pawing at the dog three times her size. Aaron quickly joined them, gave the dog a pet, and returned to the house with the two animals. But she doesn't know the danger she brings back. When his granddaughter dragged an unknown dog through the backyard gate, Aaron noticed right away. He felt very suspicious. The dog had no collar and looked wild, with thick, matted fur that had not been washed. It has several scratches around its body. Aaron brought Stacy in, thinking it would be best to wait until her husband came home before welcoming the new animal with open arms. When George arrives, he makes a shocking discovery about Aaron, it's not a dog at all, it's a wolf. Aaron gasped, more sure now that they needed to get rid of it. But Stacy refused. She was sure that wolves were more fun and not dangerous. She begged her grandparents to let him stay in the backyard and not send him back to the forest. They were wary, but finally decided to give it a chance. George would keep an eye on the wolves to make sure Stacy was always safe. But over time, it turned out that the wolf was very well behaved. Even George begins to take a liking to the wolf, so much so that he doesn't think much of it when it leads Stacy toward the woods. It was a decision he regretted for the rest of his life. While George and Aaron were gardening on the estate, completely unaware of what was about to happen, Stacy and the wolf were making their way along the lake, onto a path that bordered the forest. Stacy rarely goes this far, but she feels brave with wolves by her side. Unfortunately, at this moment, the wolf had wandered back into the forest. Whenever they got close to his first home, he couldn't help sniffing around. 
The smells were familiar, they were associated with his earliest memories. It's an instinct, and as loyal as he is to Stacy, it runs deeper than his relationship with her. Stacy is now alone, wandering off into the distance with no help. Back home, Stacy's grandparents became worried about her. They told her to tell them if she wanted to go anywhere, but she didn't say a word. They had begun searching around their property and could see no sign of her by the lake, usually her favorite spot. To make matters worse, her faithful cat, Shelby, isn't with her and looks just as worried. Erin became increasingly anxious, and George tried to calm her down. She wondered if it had something to do with wolves. Maybe it finally broke down and regained its killer instincts. That's what flashed through Aaron's mind as they searched the lake and moved toward the forest. Meanwhile, Stacy's road drifts on the road. Little did she know, she was already in danger. As her shoes hit the gravel in the road, she noticed another sound behind her. It was a low hum. As soon as she turned around, the sound changed to a roar, and a car sped past her, kicking up a cloud of dust. Stacy was able to jump away at the last second, but she was shocked and her heart raced. Looking up, she could see the car parked on the side of the road, one wheel resting on the grass for parking. The engine was turned off, and the door slowly opened. A tall figure appeared from the passenger side door. The man was much taller than the car, and he started walking directly toward Stacy. Another sat behind the wheel, watching intently as his companion moved. The girls don't know their intentions, but it's clear from their body language and facial expressions that they are up to no good. Not knowing what to do, Stacy just waited. Her eyes widened and she let out a low, barely audible scream. The first man walked quickly towards her, never breaking eye contact. He has a bushy beard and tattoos on his arms. Stacy finally worked up the courage to back off and tried to run into the woods again. However, the man quickly grabbed her arm, picked her up, turned around and walked into the car. She screamed, but they were too far away for anyone to hear. The man ran away with her and got into the car. Stacy despaired, but just as he opened the car door to push her in, she heard him let her go with a yell. She fell to the ground and opened her eyes, only to see that huge figure crawling back towards the car, and on top of him was the wolf that sensed the danger and came running wildly from the forest. It grabbed the man's arm with its sharp teeth and continued to pull him away from Stacy. By this time, the second man had gotten out of the car and was trying to free his friend from the wolf's arms. The two managed to break free from him, and hurriedly backed into the car and drove away. Stacy ran as fast as she could toward the house, followed by the wolf, and her grandparents met her on the way. They hugged her for a few minutes and thank God she was okay. Since then, the wolf has truly won everyone's trust.